I'm inviting our upfront participants to come and join me because the scripture reading is very small and it is one that you are familiar with. Uh, again, if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the likelihood is that you have heard the scripture when you were at a communion service because it is Paul's recitation of what Jesus said about the communion service. So we're just putting those in place who I will explain about their participation in a moment. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. It's on page 1060 if you want to see it. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, what did he say? This is my body, which is for you. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this. We got out the, do you see we got out the tablecloth? Do you see how many communion tables have this here? It says, do this in remembrance of me. For whenever, thank you for coming to breakfast, those of you who did, but whenever you eat and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as people who are in anticipation of Jesus' second coming, we participate in this service today with extra, how shall we say, anticipation, with extra interest, because we, we call ourselves Adventists, right? We are anticipating the second Advent. But my friends, because of the first Advent, because of the life, death, burial, and resurrection, praise Jesus, of the king of the universe who came and died for us, we have eternal life. I'm so glad you've come today because today is Passover. For reals, for reals. Okay? If you didn't look at your calendar, just know that Passover began last night and will be celebrated for a week in its traditional way. And it comes together with Easter on the same weekend about once every seven years. So you won't get to do this particular thing with Passover and Easter for a very long time. It'll separate again because Passover is on a lunar calendar and Easter is on a solar calendar. So they don't coincide like they do except once in a great while. Glad that you are here. Hope that you will never look at communion again the same way because of what happens today. I hope too that you all have your bread, the matzah that has been provided for you, and also a little beaker of grape juice because we want you all to have that. At the right time, you will participate in our tableau. We have here a family. Don't you love them? It's an, it's an extended family. It's part of our church family. Amen. And you will also note that there is an empty chair, but I get ahead of myself if I tell you too much about that empty chair right now. Passover or Pesach. Can you all, can you all say ha, ha? You get to... You've got to be able to say ha if, if you want to speak Hebrew, okay? So this is Pesach. Passover or Pesach is called the, free, the Feast of Freedom since it celebrates the deliverance of the Israelites. We all get to be Israelites today. From bondage in Egypt and memorializes the night when the faithful were protected by the blood of the Lamb. In the book of Exodus, God sends Moses to Pharaoh to serve as the deliverer of Israel. When Pharaoh refused Moses' request to set the Israelites free from their slavery, ten plagues descended upon Egypt. 
They were intended to judge Egypt and its gods. The term Passover refers to the events of the tenth and final plague brought upon those who lived in Egypt, which was the death, this is very sad, okay, the death of the firstborn. Raise your hand if you are a firstborn. Okay, this son, daughter, didn't matter. And it also included your livestock and your favorite dog. Okay, so now do you feel the import? Do you now know why there was weeping and wailing after the tenth plague? In obedience to God's instructions, those who believed in God placed the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts of their homes so that the plague of death would pass over. To commemorate the first Passover, a meal known as the Seder is celebrated each year. The word Seder means order. So there's, you, we, we have other words in English uh, for this. There is a, a reading that we're going to do with this meal because the meal and its services are done in a series of prescribed <coughs> steps. The Seder Haggadah, which means the telling, is the script that we're going to use during the Seder. It gives the order of the steps of the meal, the readings used, and the instructions. Now, everyone will have the opportunity, as you have been told, to participate in the Seder. When the script, which is going to be read by the three of us, when the script says all, and that's going to be Sal's part, he's going to lead you in uh, joining in and saying some things. Now, you'll see that on the screen, we do, have, we do have it all laid out for you, so hopefully you can, you can read that and join in when Sal is reading. Milt is going to be the reader of the script, and I'm going to be the narrator. All right? Are we ready? I'm going to give over to the reader. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Kit, would you help me? I'm going to have you walk that up the aisle at the moment, and I'm going to come with you. The Seder plate, which this is one that Chris and I bought in Israel, has many items on it that we will use to experience the Passover using our senses. During the Passover Seder, we will drink four glasses of grape juice. The cup of... Oh, now I'm giving away some things you're waiting for, aren't I? The cup of sanctification, the cup of plagues, the cup of redemption, and the cup of praise. We will say the traditional Jewish prayer before drinking each cup, you will receive one cup. Now, this is instructions for you, and you have one whole cup, so you'll receive a cup filled with blood. Please portion out your drinking, so don't drink the whole thing at once. I know you're thirsty, and I know you'd like to drink the whole thing. Reader. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Now many of you know that last Sabbath I told you that there are four times we're going to drink. Are you recognizing that this is a very special, special cup? Sanctification is the first step to our salvation. May we be sanctified through the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua. Let us lift up our cups, the cup of sanctification, and bless the Lord for his abundant giving. I'm believing that this is the time when you should open up your cups. You have a little lid on them. And then we're going to say the prayer together with Sal. 
Okay? You see the all there? Blessed are you, that piece. Do you have, do you have your cup ready? All right. Do you have your cup ready? Okay? Lucky me. <laughs> Perks of being the leader. Sal? Ble blessed are you, are you O Lord, Lord God, God, ruler of, of the universe, universe who created the fruit, fruit of the divine. Drink you all of it. The washing of hands was customarily done by the servant or the slave of the house, but it was at the, this time during the washing of the hands that the Bible tells us what Yeshua did. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was only why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. This washing of the hands and feet, which was part of the Passover ritual, is why we celebrate the washing of feet during communion. Today we have, I, I take it, you've all washed your hands at least once. I hope. <laughs> Just hit my elbow if you haven't. But this is, this is the piece that was done by Jesus to show us the fact that in his kingdom, the servant is the greatest of all. That's why we still have foot washing in our communion service. Let us read all. Blessed art Blessed thou, O Lord, Lord, Lord our God, King of, of the universe, universe who has sanctified us with thy, with thy commandments, commandments and commanded, and commanded us, us to wash thy hands. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. We will take the parsley, or what is known as the harpas, and eat it. We will dip it in the salt water. Dip it in the salt water. We do this to symbolize the tears and pain of the Israelites. After the following prayer, we'll take the parsley and eat it, and remember that even though we have painful circumstances in our lives, we will always have the hope that God, of God to free us from our tribulations. All. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the earth. Parsley is still the basis of a good tabbouleh salad. So you can do that when you go locally here. You can have tabbouleh, which is mostly parsley. Now comes the most interesting parts of the Seder for believers in Yeshua. The breaking of the middle matzah. Now, we've got piles of matzah there. There's one that has three. This one has more. But this one over here has three. Remember I told you that there were more than one piece of bread, Then it's very important that you understand this. The larger piece, okay, so I'm going to ask that you go ahead and pull the middle piece out and break it. 
Okay, the larger piece is wrapped. Just take a piece. Do you have a, here we go. I'm going to give you this. Because this is the fun part for the kids. Are you watching? Okay. Larger piece is wrapped and hidden. It's called the afikoman, which comes later. The afikoman is hidden or buried to be found and redeemed later for a reward. The smaller piece is eaten with the meal. So why are there three matzahs? Some rabbis say it represents the high priest, the Levites, and the, pe the people of Israel. Or the three forms of worship in temple times. But why is the middle broken? Other rabbis say it represents Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But this too does not explain why the middle matzah is broken. Still other rabbis say that in the wilderness God gave manna daily. But on Friday a double portion was given and one is added for Passover, making three. But why is the middle matzah broken and buried and brought back? The tradition has been celebrated for thousands of years for us who believe in Yeshua. It is no mystery. It is a beautiful piece of Jesus and the one and only God revealed in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Son left the Holy of Holies, heaven, and was broken and brought back. He who finds him receives a great reward, known as eternal life. This is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt, all of whom are hungry. Let them come and eat bread. This is all who are needy. Let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. Now we are here. Next year we may be in the land of Israel. And that would be for us a metaphoric Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year we may be free men. Okay, so I'm going to also break this and I'm going to take the larger piece and I'm going to wrap it up. Is now the time? Do we hide it? Okay. I have asked one of my participants if, and this would happen at a Passover service, would you please go and hide that? We're going to ask the kids to go and look for it later, so don't hide it too well, but please go and hide that for us. <laughs> My wife and I have very much enjoyed the use of the Israelite festivals as the teaching devices that they were meant to be. And as you can see, this is a fulfillment of what is said, that parents should teach their children when they go in and when they come out, when they sit down and when they rise up. You should be teaching your children. And so the Passover service is a family event where we teach our children the plan of salvation in the very things that we eat. So next time you come to communion, and or you think, I don't want to go to communion, please think of your children and make sure that they come and don't do what my mama used to do. She wouldn't take any of the grape juice and give it to me. This pastor will tell you Bring your kids, have them participate in communion, especially as they get to understand who Jesus is, because this is where communion comes from. So, no, we don't believe that you have to believe something special about these emblems that you have in your hand. So please use them to teach your kids. This is what it is all about today. Now is the time for the four questions to be read, but we're going to wait a little bit because we have, we have a person who is hiding, hiding something for us right now. She's doing a very, very good job. I, I think she must have gone over to L.A. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll wait just one more, one more second. Okay, she, she must, have found, must have found a very, very nice place uh, to, to put this. So kids, 
Kids, I hope you were watching. I hope you were watching where she went because just now we're going to ask you to go and find it. Okay, because we need this piece to be redeemed and we need it for dessert. It's kind of the dessert of the meal. Okay? All right, we're going to continue and um, we will have the first question. Thank you so much. Well done. Oh, she hit it back. Oh, I won't tell. I won't tell. Okay. Who's got the first question then? Hold on one second. We need to give you the microphone. Thank you so much. Okay, let me hold it for you. Go ahead. On all the other nights, we eat bread or matzah. On this night, why do we only eat matzah? Okay, second question. On all the other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? Parents, are you ready to make answers for this? Fourth, third question. Do we have other questions? Okay, third question. On all the other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once on this night. Why do we dip them twice? Hmm, interesting. On all the other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we only eat reclining? I told the kids last week that um, this kind of a table that we have set up here is very Western. And you can imagine that it would be very difficult to wash the feet of people under that table. Understand that the Eastern is more like the picture. If you want to take your, your bulletin and look at the picture at the very top of your bulletin, you will see people reclining at table, meaning that their feet were out to the edges. Okay? So this is the question that's being asked. Why on this night... Do we do these things? Why on this night is it different? So before we read the Haggadah, which tells in detail the whole story, I will answer your questions one by one. We eat matzah because when our ancestors were told by Pharaoh that they could leave e Egypt, they had no time to bake bread with leaven, so they baked it without leaven or yeast. At the Seder, we eat bitter herbs to remind us of the bitterness our ancestors experienced when they were oppressed by the Egyptian taskmasters. At the Seder, we dip the food twice, the parsley in salt water, as we already have explained, and the matzah into bitter herbs. By the way, did you, did you try the bitter herbs with the matzah? You didn't do that, did you? Here, watch. Break a piece off. Okay, you guys don't get to do this, and you're probably lucky that you don't. But this, this is matzah, and on the Seder plate is horseradish. Horseradish. I'm going to smell it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay? If you are, like, really, really brave, you can try that. Okay? But that's what they have as the bitter herbs, as the way of having pain happen to you when you eat something straight up like that. Some of you are going, yeah, horseradish, love that on my stick. Okay, all right. It's meant for other foods in other places, but this is kind of straight up on matzah. It's, it's painful. As a sign of freedom, we lean to the left when we partake in the cup. In ancient times, slaves ate hurriedly, standing while royalty and the wealth of Egypt and other empires dined on couches. To show that Israel was now free, they too <laughs> reclined. Okay, it's a, it's a symbol of freedom. It's a symbol of, I don't have to run away. I'm not a slave. Since we do not have couches for each person, each person can lean on your left. Lean on your left when you drink the cup or, or eating the matzah, just to remind yourself that you're a free person now. So now we move into the telling of the Passover story, and we're going to be doing this responsibly, beginning with the reader. The Bible teaches that during a great famine in the land of Canaan, the sons of Israel journeyed to Egypt to purchase food. There they were reunited with their brother Joseph. Because of his influence, they were permitted to dwell in the fertile plains of Goshen. At first, the house of Israel numbered less than 80 souls, but in time, their numbers swelled. 
their flocks increased, and they became a mighty people. All together. And then and there rose, rose a, a new Pharaoh, who one who no did God. not know Joseph. He beheld the might of Israel, and feared the time of war. The sons of Jacob might join themselves with Egypt's foes. And so he subdued the Israelites, and he afflicted them with cruel labor. Taskmasters were placed over the Israelites to compel them to make bricks and to build Pharaoh's great storage cities of Ramses and Pithom. But, but despite, despite their hardship, they continued to thrive, just, just as God had promised. This caused Pharaoh even greater alarm, and he ordered the slaughter of Israel's infant sons. By his command, every male child born the Hebrew was cast in the Nile and drowned. How sober were the afflictions of the Jewish people. In anguish we cried to the God of our fathers, and God heard our cry. God remembered his covenant, and God raised up a deliverer, a redeemer, the man Moses. And he sent Moses to Pharaoh's court to declare the commandment of the Lord. Let my people go. But Pharaoh would not hearken to the Lord of hosts. And so Moses pronounced God's judgment on Pharaoh's house and on Pharaoh's land. Plagues were poured out upon the Egyptians, upon their crops, and upon their flocks. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not yield to the will of God. He would not let the house of Jacob depart. Then the tenth plague fell on the land of Egypt, the death of of Egypt's firstborn. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant, who was behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. But to protect the children of Israel, God commanded the head of each Jewish household to sacrifice a spotless lamb without breaking any of its bones and to apply its blood to the doorway of our homes, first to the top of the doorway, the lintel, and then to the two side posts. And all the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the, and the plague, plague shall not be upon you, to destroy you, when I smite the land of Egypt. By the blood of the Lamb was Israel spared. By the, By the blood, blood of the Lamb was, was Jacob redeemed. redeemed. By, By the blood, blood of the Lamb was the death made to pass over. Passover. The night when death passed over the houses of Israel because of the blood of the Passover Lamb. What a mighty act of redemption, and what a beautiful picture of redemption destined to come. For just as no bones of the first Passover lambs were broken, so none of the Messiah's bones were broken. And just as the blood of those first Passover lambs was applied in faith to the doorposts of Israel's homes, so the blood of the Messiah must be applied in faith to the doorpost of our hearts. Today we worship God not only because the angel of death passed over our ancestors' homes, but because all of us, whether Jewish or Gentile, may be redeemed from an even greater bondage through the faith in the Messiah of Israel, the Messiah, Jesus. Through him, we may pass over from death to life. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh to ask for the release of their people, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened against the Israelites and would not release them from the bondage of slavery. Each time the Pharaoh refused to let Israelites go, the land of Egypt came under a great plague. With the tenth and most awful plague, 
the heart of Pharaoh would be pierced. We must remember the great sacrifice at which redemption was purchased. Lives were sacrificed to bring the Israelites out of bondage of Egypt. As we recite each plague, let us dip our little finger, this will be your instruction, into the cup, allowing a drop of juice to fall on your plate. So bring your plate over and let, there you go, that's a good practice. Okay, We will spill one drop out of our cup for each of the ten plagues with your little finger dipped into the cup to remove a drop, one for each of the ten plagues onto your plate. Repeat after me. Blood, frogs, lice, swarms of insects, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, slaying of the firstborn. It is God that we honor in remembering that he passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians. Normally on the, in the Seder meal, of course, there is a lamb. Uh, we, we have omitted that not because we don't believe in it, but because we just didn't put it out today. <laughs> does, does that sound weak? Yeah, that was weak. <laughs> so pretend I have a shank bone of the lamb. Okay, Shank bone reminds us of the lamb whose blood marked the doors of the Israelites. But I would point to this emblem, this symbol that we have in our church. Can you see where there just might have been blood on the top and on two sides? Can you see that? The Israelites were to slaughter the lamb and put the blood on the sides and tops of the door frame. The blood on the sides and top of the door dripping down to the ground would make the shape of the cross. God gave his people instructions that only through obedience would they be spared from the angel of death. Isaiah told of the coming Messiah and that he would be led like a lamb to the slaughter. We know that Yeshua was our final blood atonement so that we would be freed from the bondage of sin and that we would be passed over by death. Okay, now we need to lift that other half of the matzah. Okay, now, now, now is, maybe I was just a little bit ahead a moment ago. Lift the other half of the matzah so you've all got your matzah ready. Why do we eat the unleavened bread? The dough did not have time to rise before God revealed himself to them and redeemed them. Leaven is a symbol of sin. You could think of it as a change agent. So there is no change from the original. Yeshua is pure and sinless. The matzah was striped. If you notice, even on your little piece of matzah, it was striped and pierced. Yeshua was striped with the whip and pierced with the sword. The maror, which is the horseradish, why do we eat this bitter herb? We eat this bitter herb because of the hardship of the Israelites that they had to bear in slavery. And I don't know, can I get a witness that living in this world today is hard? <laughs> our life before salvation brings tears to our eyes. The charoset, okay? This is something that looks a little brown, looks a bit like cement, dirt, okay? Tastes really good, by the way. Did you not bring me my plate back? Oh, that's okay. You can leave it. I'll, I'll steal some of hers. The charoset, again, you've got to be able to say the cha. Okay? The charoset is a symbol of the mortar, the mortar that the Israelites used to build the storehouses uh, of Egypt. It symbolizes the toil and the labor that the Jewish people had in Egypt. And now we bless the second cup of grape juice, the cup of the plagues. All. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, 
ruler of the universe, the universe who creates the fruit of the vine. All. Blessed are you, you O Lord, Lord our God, God King, King of the universe, universe who, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has, and has commanded, commanded us concerning the eating of the maror. Okay, now you may eat the bitter herb with some of your matzah. In remembrance of the holy temple, we do as the rabbis did in temple times. We put the matzah and the bitter herbs together and they ate them like a sandwich. In order to observe literally the words of the Torah, they shall eat it, Passover offering, with matzah and bitter herbs. This comes from Exodus 12, verse 8, and Numbers chapter 9, verse 11. This sandwich was eaten with lamb during temple times in Jerusalem, and it is also known as the sop. If you're into King James English, this is the sop. Okay, you, you, in, in, in Arabic, when you're eating Arabic food, uh, you, which you can hear in Santa Clarita uh, in a number of places, you use the bread to sop up. And I know that there are people from other nations here today, and I want you to know that it could be a tortilla with which you sop up, or it could be uh, Ethiopian bread, tef bread that you sop up. It is something that happens in many, many cultures still today who do not eat with a knife and fork like I do from England or just a fork like you do in the States. You sop up what is there. Reader. One of you shall betray me. Peter motioned John to ask Jesus who it was. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop. After he dipped sop, Judas left to portray, betray him. Let us now eat in the, the remembrance of grace, mercy and love that God has for each of us. For he sent Yeshua, our Messiah, to be our Passover lamb. We too, like the Israelites, released from the bondage of slavery, can be saved from the bondage of sin. How great is God's goodness to us for each of his acts of mercy and kindness. Here we go. We will declare Dayenu. Can you say Dayenu with me? Dayenu, which is the Hebrew word which means it is, it is all sufficient. If the Lord had merely rescued us, he but had not judged the Egyptians, Dayenu. If the Lord had only destroyed their gods, but had, had not parted the Red Sea. Dayenu. If he had only led us through the desert, but had not given us the Sabbath. Dayenu. If he had only given us the Torah, but not the land of Israel. Dayenu. At this time, we're going to sing a song that is uh, number thir hymn, hymn number 33. You take your hymnals. Do we don't have this up on the screen, do we? We'll just need our hymnals for this. Is this correct?
How great is God's goodness for us for each of his acts and mercy and kindness. We will declare Dianu. It would have been sufficient. If the Lord had merely rescued us, excuse me, and had not judged the Egyptians, Dianu. If he had only destroyed the gods but had not parted the Red Sea, Dianu. If he had drowned our enemies but had not fed us with manna, Dianu. If he had led us through the desert and not given us the Sabbath, if he'd only given us the Torah but had not given us the land of Israel, Amen. Reader. Let us give thanks to the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth and forever. We praise you, O God, from whose abundance we have partaken. We praise, we praise you, O Lord our God, our, God, our Savior, and our King, who gives give bread to all flesh, for your loving kindness endures forever. Since the meal cannot be completed without eating the afikomen, the afikomen, the broken middle matzah that was hidden and will now be brought back, it has to be found. Kids... This is your moment. We need the kids, all who would like to participate, to go and look for the hidden piece of bread. We're waiting. We can't go on until we have found it. Now you saw where she went, so let's see how well she hid it. Families, I just want you to know that the fact that you bring your children and that you trust this congregation to teach them about the living God is such a privilege. And I want to thank you all for coming today and also for coming every Sabbath. Did we find it? It's been found. Dayenu. All right, bring dessert to the table, please. Thank you so very, very much. Right here. Did we find it? Okay, did you, do, you guys, do you guys still have your matzah? Do you still have your pieces? Okay, make sure the kids have them too. My mama used to just let me dip my finger in the juice and she would give me a little corner of her, her unleavened bread and it, it made me feel like she was such a rebel. I liked that about her, I really did. But I determined that when I was a big boy, and when I had kids, that they were going to participate in communion right from the very start. And so that's why I'm expressing to you that I hope today, as you are seeing this meal, which involves the whole family and is meant as a teaching device, and that Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me every time you eat it, that from now on you won't be sad at all about sharing communion with any child who is learning about Jesus. Amen. Many ask, how does the Messiah Yeshua fit into the Passover story? God gives us many signs and prophecies about our coming Messiah. Yeshua fill, fulfilled all the prophecies. Amen? Amen. All the prophecies foretold about the first coming of the Messiah in the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. You know, there are three parts to the Old Testament. The Torah, the prophets, and the writings. And Jesus fulfilled the lot. Just as the Lamb's blood protected the Israelites from death, Yeshua's blood will protect us from everlasting death. So, this is the moment you've been waiting for, isn't it? Let's lift our cups for the third time. Lifting the cup, this cup of redemption. Aren't you glad that this is the cup that you get to participate in? This is the cup. You have your cup ready. Uh, uh, Norm, our head deacon, was so smart after we just had the carpets cleaned to put lids on these things. Don't you think, parents? That was, that was really great. I did think about sippy cups, but I was overridden. Okay. Let us drink this third cup. This is the cup of redemption, symbolizing the blood of the Passover lamb. It was the cup after supper with which Yeshua identified himself with that we celebrate in our communion service, which we are doing right now. 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Drink ye all of it. The Lord, reader, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In Egypt, had they not trusted God and applied the blood of the lamb to the doors, they would have died. So also, God must see the blood of the lamb, Yeshua, our Savior, at the door of our heart, that we may pass over from death to life. It was by God's grace. Did you want to hear about grace this morning? This is it. It was by God's grace and for his name's sake that Israel was redeemed, not by their own righteousness. So it is also with our redemption from sin and spiritual death for those who have put their faith in Yeshua, the Lamb of God. It is not our righteousness that saves us. It is the grace of God. We are witnesses to God's power to deliver us from slavery and sin. God calls us. Do not go back to bondage in Egypt, nor bondage in sin. There is a Redeemer. His name is Jesus, our Lord. We have partaken of the Afikoman and the third cup and the, the cup of redemption, redeeming the one who was to come has already come, and he will come again. Now, the next cup is, and you, can, you guys can help me with this up here, this is the cup of Elijah. Theme of the part of the Haggadah before the meal was the redemption of the Israelites from Egypt. In keeping with tradition, we now move to the Messianic redemption. We open the door, you can pretend that I'm going over there to open that door, indicating our readiness to receive the prophet Elijah, who is the herald of the Messiah. We must also now open our hearts to this truth and just understand that at this moment, as a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, I can tell you with great joy and happiness that we believe that the message that we give as Adventists is the message of Elijah. It is meant to prepare the way of the Lord. It is Revelation 14, verse 7 that says, Watch Him. Watch the Lamb. Watch the Creator God. And when you come here on Sabbaths, I want you to know that you are not only celebrating the Creator God, but that you are also celebrating the Savior God that is being talked about right here in the Passover. Both of those are part of of what you celebrate when you celebrate Jesus Christ and his second coming, his soon second coming, for which we are telling our friends and neighbors, hey, do you know Jesus? Because he is the one, he is the Passover lamb that will take you from slavery in this world to sin to the next world, to the heavenly Canaan. Is that not good news? Amen. Because that, my friends, is the story of Passover out of which our communion service comes. So as you've been participating in this communion service and you think, oh, this is wonderful, let us not forget that it is the retelling of the way in which God saves us that gives us the joy, the, the courage to go out of these doors today and to say to our friends, hey, you've got to know Jesus because this is not all there is. There is eternity. And it's going to be with our Heavenly Father. 
Are you wanting to come? Are you wanting to be part of that? I, I think that that is the, that is the joy that, that I have that we are celebrating today. Let us read all together. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Yeshua spoke of John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Let us lift up our cups, the cups of praise, and give thanks to God. It is the cup of praise that Jesus said that he would not drink until the kingdom of God comes. All together now. Blessed are you, are you O Lord our God, God, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Now you all wish that you were up here with big cups. Mm. The Bible says that when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his blood. Let us, then, go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For he, for here, we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. All together now we say, next, next year, year in, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Next year in Jerusalem. I tell you, my friends, the cities that you have in this world today, the gathering of people, the symbolic cities that exist. We, we often talk about Babylon and we talk about Jerusalem. These are the symbolic cities, one of this world and the other of the world that is God's, the world where God is king. So when we say together, next year in Jerusalem, what we are actually saying is, this is my father's world. This is the world that he will change one day very soon Amen. and that he will change us so that we can live in the new world together with him. So I know that, I know that it sounds somewhat uh, strange and we think of Jerusalem over in Israel today, but I want you to know that the Jerusalem we are thinking of today is the new Jerusalem, the one that Jesus is going to bring from heaven down to this earth that has been recreated and will contain all the saints from all ages, and together we will live with the Lord. And the Bible says we will have Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath in that new Jerusalem. That will become our gathering point from wherever we scatter to in the universe. Can you imagine? I don't know about you, but I know for absolute sure, heaven is not going to be boring. Heaven is not to be missed. It's going to be way more interesting than anything any of us can ever imagine, ever, ever think that might be worth, uh, uh, you know, choosing this instead of heaven. So I want you to leave today knowing that being redeemed by God, being part of his people and still living in this world is what we're called to do now. But we live in anticipation of the fact that next year, the year of our Lord, he will come and that he will save us. Amen. 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 Let us sing our closing hymn together now. <laughs>